A question from Torrance in the U.S. Dr. Craig says, Dear Dr. Craig, to begin, I want to thank you for all your endeavors aimed at equipping Christians with the tools for defending the faith. You've been a tremendous help to me as well as to my brother who was struggling to find answers regarding our faith. Because of what I learned from you, I was able to persuade him to continue holding out in his faith long enough for the Holy Spirit to do the rest. I'm thrilled to say that he is now a believer again. Praise the Lord and thank you, sir. My question concerns an objection to the Kalam cosmological argument that I encountered from a friend. In short, it targets the version of the Kalam which uses as support for premise 2 the argument for the impossibility of an actual infinite. I myself think that this argument, if successful, is even stronger support for 2 than contemporary cosmology, which is subject to contingent scientific findings. The objection, here paraphrased, is short and simple. If actual infinities cannot exist, then why do apologists continually assert that there was a singularity of infinite density in the finite past? Isn't the singularity itself an example of an actual infinite and therefore unable to exist, if their reasoning about infinities is indeed correct? I think that an infinite density may be odd because infinite density is merely a finite mass divided by a volume of zero, whereas, for example, an infinite mass, should it exist, will look something like 1G plus 1G plus 1G and onward to infinity. Is this enough to show that the infinite density of the singularity is different from the actual infinities which you argue do not exist? I thank Torrance for this question, and I'm thrilled for his brother. Uh, I also like the philosophical arguments, uh, and look at the scientific evidence is simply confirmation of a conclusion that philosophical arguments for the beginning of the universe already lead to. Now, with respect to his question, I would say, along with most cosmologists, that the singularity of infinite density is merely a mathematical idealization. It is the point at which all space-time shrink down to literally nothing at all. And that therefore this is not an actual physical state of reality, it's a mere mathematical idealization. And his point about dividing a finite mass by zero yielding infinity is a good example that illustrates this. This is exactly the point that my friend Quentin Smith makes in dealing with the question of the infinite density of the singularity. He says it's simply a mathematical artifact of the division by zero is impossible. You divide something by zero and the answer is infinity. Uh, and it's in that sense that the universe having a zero volume, regardless of its mass, the density becomes infinite. So I would say that this state of infinite density is not a state that is a physical state that actually exists. It's merely a mathematical idealization of the contraction of the universe as you go back in time to its ideal mathematical limit. Bill, would the philosophical arguments for the finitude of the past predict that science will never discover an eternal universe? I mean, if it's impossible. Not necessarily, Kevin. I've thought of this too. It seems to me that the finitude of the past is something that is verifiable, but it's not falsifiable. Why do I say that? Well, because if God created the universe, say, through a Big Bang, modern science could come to verify that the past is not infinite, that the past is only finite. It's a verifiable prediction. But it might not be falsifiable because God could have created a steady-state universe out of nothing a finite time ago. And so it would have the appearance of being eternal, but in fact, it wouldn't be. So I do think that the finitude of the past is something that you could verify, but it's not necessarily falsifiable. I understand that answer, Bill. It, it could bring up the, this issue of God creating something with the appearance of X. Exactly. The, the idea that I suggested of God's creating a steady-state universe, at some point in the finite past, would involve creating a universe with the appearance of age, when in fact it's actually young. And some young Earth creationists have actually adopted that hypothesis, 
with respect to explaining the apparent age of the universe. So that can have the look of desperation about it. And if you're not willing to say that God could or would create something with the appearance, the mere appearance of age, then it would turn out that the hypothesis of a universe with a beginning would be falsifiable. That is really problematic when you start having God create things with the appearance of age, isn't it? Because it it tends to make God a, a deceiver. In yes. That sense. And Solve he could it. have created the universe then five minutes ago yeah. with the appearance yeah. of age, and we'd never know the difference. Good verse on this for Christians is Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they reveal knowledge. And so the universe is giving us, is speaking to us, and it's giving us knowledge. And the appearance of age would not be knowledge of something. Right. That's, you know, that's right. So, it would be, well, deception or misleading at best. But in we, any case, well, I think the, uni- the, the beginning of the universe in any case would certainly be verifiable by modern science and would therefore even pass the most stringent requirements of the verification principle. 